Everybody gotta find their own way home You can't show no one just how to go Some people like to fly, some people like to stay down low I wanna show you something real that you ain't seen Give you a little break in your routine When I talk about it, I want you to know what I mean Hey, welcome to our film. My name is Greg Grant, and welcome to my life in an off-the-grid, solar-powered pyramid. So this movie is a documentary about my life, documenting my life on solar power in the woods of northwestern Montana, um, living in an, al an alternative home, which means that it's non-conventional. I built it out of straw bales and peeled logs and chicken wire and other stuff like that, and I'll go into lots of detail in this film and I have step-by-step -step, step photos and video of the process. Um, my main message in producing this movie is I, did, I, I built my house very cheaply. I didn't need a bank loan or any kind of loan like that. It was, you know, the, the first house that I lived in was just a few thousand dollars. I, I lived there 10 years and the house only cost $2,500. Yeah, that's right, $2,500. I lived there for 10 years that way. That I want to share the, the the amount of freedom that gave me the the freedom from having to pay a mortgage or rent or or anything like that. It just it gave me a lot of freedom to be the musician that I am. That's what I am. I'm a musician. I am not a carpenter. I'm not a solar installer. I'm not an electrician. I'm not a politician. I don't even have a college degree, but I have this story that I think is timely right now. That alternative energy works, and you can build your own house, um, just as I did. I, di I do have some experience in construction. Aside from music, I've done lots of odd jobs and probably spent about four and a half years of my life working in construction. So um, I, do had, I did have some experience in that and some know-how. But all you need is someone with a little bit of know-how and you too could build your own comfortable, energy-efficient dwelling. And that's what I'd like to share with you in this film. Also, uh, this film is a reaction because I hear so much about how how expensive green energy is and green construction is, and I know it can be, um, and there can be an upfront cost for in terms of you know solar panels and your battery system and all that. There can be an upfront initial cost that's a lot more expensive than paying your you know forty dollars or sixty dollars or twenty dollars a month, whatever your utility bill is. But over time, it's actually cheaper and. That's one thing I want to show in this movie. But just, just for a ballpark idea, um, as I said, the, the one structure I lived in for 10 years was $2,500. And my solar system that I have added on to over the years was roughly about $5,300. So that's really not a lot of money over 14 years. And I haven't had to pay an electric bill or, or any other kind of bill on top of that. Um, but I hear a lot of intelligent people who say that, you know, wind power and solar power, they're not enough to produce energy for our world. And I vehemently disagree. And, you know, I, I can't talk about producing energy on uh, a large scale. Um, I, I don't have knowledge of that. I can only talk about my experience producing it for myself on a small scale. And it works. And, and that's what I'm going to try and show you in this film, as well as lots of details and video of my, the three structures I built and I'll just say I, I built one structure um, at a price tag of $500 for 200 square feet just a little studio um, guest house um, so you know you can start out at a few hundred dollars and have a, a comfortable home and then this current house I'm in uh, is about 2400 square feet and cost about $20,500 so that's about eight dollars and fifty six cents a square foot I believe um, and yeah, welcome to the film. I, I'm gonna show you lots of lots uh, of video. Hey, so this is the utility room uh, where I have all my solar load controls. So 
uh, coming in from the outside, I have all my solar panels, and the electricity is coming into this combiner box. I don't know how well you can see, uh, but there's fuses here. Uh, each one comes in, and each one is fused individually. Uh, right now I have six. I had seven, but I lost one in a lightning storm. Um, and then the, the power comes out of here into this charge controller. And this basically controls the charge, keeps it from overcharging the batteries. Um, it'll disconnect the load if there's any kind of a problem, a short. Um, and it, it's, it's very accurate. It's a, a digital one. Um, um, and then from there it goes into my fuse box and this basically just controls uh, I have three different loads, one for the, the refrigerator, one for a freezer, and one for the rest of the house so it's fused just as, as it would be in, normal, in a normal house um, and of course the, these are battery chargers all three of these and I don't use those most of the year but between November and April I use them um, sometimes run the generator as much as an hour a day uh, just to charge the batteries uh, in the dead of winter when there's not that much light here in Montana. This would be so easy in a place like California or New Mexico, Arizona, so many places like that. But we have really good sunshine here uh, a lot of the year in Montana. And um, yeah, and you, you saw the battery bank, and uh, there'll be a close up of that. And that is the utility room. Oh, and I forgot to mention the inverter is kind of the heart of my system. That converts the, well, the sunlight is going, it's being controlled and fused. Uh, it's being stored in the batteries, and that's as DC power, direct current power. Um, this inverter converts the DC power to AC power, which is what most of the world runs on, alternating current. Um, so you probably can't, can't see it that real, real well, but... Um, you know, it shows the state of the batteries, what they are at DC, which is right now 12.6. It shows you how many amps I'm using, uh, which right now is 6 amps at DC, but this is sending, you know, just as in a normal house, uh, an alternating current. So you can plug in your computer or lights or your uh, uh, clothes washer, um, radio, stereo, what, whatever you're using, it's coming out. It's very clean power, and this is a true sine wave inverter. So. There's modified sign and true sign. Uh, modified sign is taking little samples of the sine wave, uh, but it's not nearly as smooth or as real as a true sine wave inverter, which is a little bit more expensive, but it's well worth it if you have sensitive computer equipment or audio equipment. Uh, with a modified sign, often you'll hear a, a buzz, uh, which can be very annoying. <laughs> Sometimes you hear it in your lights as well, but with the, with the true sign, it is cleaner than most conventional homes in terms of power because there's no dropouts, there's no spikes, no surges, no brownouts. It's um, very consistent right from the batteries. And um, yeah, it's, it's wonderful to be in charge of your own power situation, although there, there is an effort involved, of course. Uh, so you have to maintain it and you can spend lots and lots of money and have everything more automated, uh, which is something I did not do for lack of money. Uh, but yeah, I'm very happy with it. So, moving on.
so my entire solar system, and I pieced it together over 14 years, uh, actually started out with just two car batteries in a Subaru, and I would take one car battery and bring it inside the house, um, physically carry it, and that would power a little reading light and a boombox for, for music, and when it got low enough, I would check the check it with a voltmeter, um, I would switch it, and then charge up, charge it up again driving around. So I started out with no solar panels and no generator, nothing like that, just a Subaru and two batteries. But today, 14 years later, I've invested a total of $5,300 into my solar system, which if you think about it, over 14 years, I've had no other utility bills. Um, I have had to, to pay gas for the generator, but uh, in the old days, I only, only used about 25 gallons of gas a year. Um, to, to charge my battery bank in the mainly, mainly in the winter, um, so five thousand three hundred dollars for a, a solar system that is sufficient to rec run a recording studio and uh, a large refrigerator, a large freezer, lights, TV, you name it, all all that stuff, computers. Um, so yeah, it's really not that much money, and supposedly prices have come down on solar panels. Definitely love my Subarus. Had 83 and 84 Subarus. So we're looking at the footer here for the foundation. This is something you do before you pour the main part of the foundation. Um, those are two by eights. I later use those for the floor in the house, but use them as an old school form. They have more sophisticated form boards today, but I did not use them. That's the finished foundation before I pull, pour, pull the form boards off. And I should mention this is an online movie, so um, we kind of want to keep it less than an hour. Uh, if you want the pictures to go slower, just use that space bar. Lots and lots of piles of peeled logs. As a musician, I would often work nights or weekends and have a lot of my days free. And I'd like to be outside when the weather was nice and abundant trees. I started out probably over five years, that, over the five years it took me to build the house. I, in, the, in, in that time, uh, probably two years of my actual time of 40 hour weeks to build the house um, but I started out the first two years just collecting wood dragging it with the Subaru and later that wood became these posts for the house and you know so most of that lumber is really free well I mean my effort to go get it but uh to get the floor up there had to get the floor up first before we could put up the main supports for the roof so it was nice to have some good weather to do that although it did rain too and we'd have to tarp that whole thing I am so done with tarps hopefully too many tarps in my life That's the support tower to raise the eight main support posts or beams. Well, they're not beams, they're uh, main supports for a pyramid. I don't know what the technical name for those would be. Thank you, Robin Riva, for helping me get that up one evening before our house raising party here. And Rob also brought the winch, uh, used an electric winch to raise those supports up. And Jeff Whiprod, you're the man for making it all come together. Thank you for your expertise. He's the one who made all the correct cuts on those eight supports.
Ah, uh, more tarps. It actually went through a winter. We got we had it raised in October, and then I finished the rest on my own, and uh, it went through a winter that way with those tarps, and they were battered by high winds and snow loads, but it, it made it in the house. A little bit of water came in, but I was able to dry it out, and it made it. it it's a little frustrating when whenever it rained and your, you know your house is tarped and you know it's not necessarily waterproof completely, but it worked. I'm five foot six, 142 pounds. If I can do this, lots of people can do this. So I want to share this horrible, horrible, horrible sound with you, just so you have an idea of what's involved. And I know all you builders are going to be bored stiff by this, but for all you people watching who aren't builders, you might find it interesting. And we included this few minute segment just so you have an idea in, in real time, a little bit of perspective what's involved in building. And I'm using a, a skill saw, which is a wood saw. We use it with a backwards blade and it will cut metal. There are more sophisticated ways, of course. Um, but that's what I had, and it worked. I should mention that I kept the length of the metal short like this, so I, and knowing that I would be doing everything myself, that was easy for me to carry. I would have been easier in some ways to have longer lengths of metal, but then I would have needed uh, more machinery or help somehow. <laughs> and really, you know, in the whole house, I don't think I paid anybody anything for any help. It was, we had our three parties and had friends help me a few days here and there. I'd, I'd say maybe a hundred, around a hundred man hours of help. Uh, but the rest really I did myself. This was like a giant Stairmaster with sharp edges. By the end of the day, my thighs and calves would be very sore. I think it probably took about a week per side to, to do the roofing for all, all the different steps, the Tyvek and the purloins, purlins and the metal. And I'm moving quite slow because you really don't want to tear that Tyvek or fall. And I would often get confused about where my angle was and how that angle fit on the house. I, I did make a few wrong cuts, but not too many. You can see I'm confused here. Yeah, and the, the edges on the metal get very jagged from using a backwards blade on a skill saw, so you want to be real careful laying it down to not tear up that Tyvek.
One of the great things about living off the grid is that after your initial investment in your solar panels and all that stuff in your house, is that monthly you have very little, there's very little money that is needed to, to, to maintain your home. I'd say about $150 a month, that's right, $150 will cover all my home needs. That includes property taxes, propane for cooking, uh, gas for my generator when I need it, gas for the chainsaw to get firewood, um, the phone, and the internet. That's all covered in $150 a month. So imagine what you could do with all that extra money that you weren't paying on rent or your mortgage. And that's why I'm, I'm able to uh, get by on, on very little money now. I don't make a lot of money, but I don't need a lot of money. And, and just that has given me so much freedom in my life to create music and I want to share that because I think more people need to know that. I know I was inspired by stories in Mother Earth News and Backwoods Home and there's a guy who wrote the the fifty dollar underground house his name was Mike Oler. There was Bill and Athena Steen who wrote the Straw Bell House although I it was before their book when I, I had a Xerox pamphlet of theirs to, to learn about Straw Bell building and that I didn't know about that. I, I was like, wow, that's possible. I, I want to do that. So that's why I want to make this film. I, I want more people to know that there's many people, not just me, building houses, you know, for $5,000 or less or $2,000 or less. Or It doesn't take a lot of money. It just takes some time. Just happened today Something For which I've had to pay I had to learn Exactly why I had wings But never did fly Pretty cool. Anna DeFranco has a song called Swan Dive where she makes fun of building her own empire out of car tires and chicken wire. Well, I did that and it was fun. That's what moldy straw looks like. You can't use that. Those are homemade windows at a 2x6. So I think for the whole house I spent, well, you know, less than $1,000 on all the windows. They're not necessarily the, the sophisticated kind of window, but because the insula insulation of the straw is so good, it you don't, uh, it doesn't matter. Well, I should say it's not so crucial, especially with wood heat. If you use a few extra pieces of wood to heat your house, it's okay. A lot cheaper than buying um, expensive windows. 
That was all the bad straw. The waste straw that'll be used for the garden. And I did have some store-bought dust masks, but they would just keep on breaking, so ended up being better off with a, a bandana and usually moistened it with water because uh, the dust from the straw is annoying. I'd love to see people going in together and buying land together, helping each other build, uh, maybe installing a, a community energy um, system, whether it be at wind or solar. I think that could help definitely defray a lot of the costs and effort involved. It's, it's amazing how quickly things go when, when people are helping each other. I've noticed that with some, some of our house raising parties. It's boom, in a day, what, I, what would take me two weeks to do was done in, in six hours. And that's, that's wonderful. It, psychologically, it's just great to have things move along like that. Mm -hmm. I would... <laughs> we can take out of this bucket. All right. Uh-oh. We're documenting the child labor here. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? Child labor is when you have children who are working. For minimum wage. For minimum wage. <laughs> For below minimum. <laughs> basically working. It's basically slave labor. You don't get paid a whole lot. All right. Pay, so. Thank you. Did you empty that one already? Yep. Yep. Come on. Bring it on. Oh, man. We better tell yes. us to step it up. I'm going to scrape this stuff off my shovel. Scrape it off your shovel. You know, if you want to put mud on the walls, guys... Are we using it as fast as y'all are making it? I know. Are we? Yes. Oh, great. Perfect. Yeah. Great. It looks like faster. Oh, I'll that's good. I'll smudge some of this on the wall. Mm -hmm. We can smudge some of that on Yeah, you know, why don't you do that? So why don't you take it over there so we're not... That's an amazing mortar mixer from Chad. Thank you. Thank you for fixing our wheelbarrow. This was a, a fun day. It was a fun plaster party. Oh, and I should mention, I said a uh, hundred man hours of work of uh, work from other people, not not including the parties. You know, on other days, just the one party alone would be a hundred man hours or more. I think. Karn's making uh, a figure there out of the extra mud. She's still there, although we have knocked her head off several times, not on purpose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Linda says the statue's head, not Karn's head. And uh, the, the plaster mix, the earth plaster mix gets very sticky, so you actually have to reach your hand in there and knock it out. It's it's an earth plaster mix. Um, so mainly earth, a little bit of Portland, a little bit of lime. And in here I'm working inside. It's very hot and dry, so it, it actually helps to use that hose there to, to keep it moist as you're dry, uh, as you know, several times as you're working. To, it helps to prevent it from cracking. And I didn't use any trowels or anything like that. I basically just used rubber gloves in my hands, which gives you a certain kind of look. Uh, some people prefer a smoother, more uniform look, and they'll be using trowels. But the beauty of uh, using straw and earth plaster is you can do it any way you'd like. There is no one right way. And I'm applying the second coat here. You. You do three coats normally, and your last coat can be a colored coat, which is something I still haven't gotten to, um, but there's no hurry. It kind of looks nice with just the two. It's very earthy, although someday we could do a, an actual colored plaster. I did Straw Bell Studio without a hose of any kind. 
and that works just fine as well. But, um, <clears throat> it gives you a little bit of a smoother finish. You can actually spray the plaster with a hose and re really get it kind of for your, your final touch. You actually spray it and let it drip down a little bit. It gives it a very smooth finish, which, which I enjoyed this time. Without the hose, it's a rougher, a little bit rougher finish. I hear over and over that solar power and wind power are just not enough, that they won't provide enough electricity to meet our demands. And I just totally disagree. And I don't know much about um, providing power on a mass scale through transmission lines and all that, but I, I do know that if we could simply decentralize power, there's enough sunshine in, in the western US, California, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, those could all be run on solar. There's supposedly enough wind power in the Midwest alone to power the entire U.S. Um, the entire electricity demands for the entire United States could come simply from Kansas and Nebraska and, and those Midwestern, that Midwestern corridor. And then you just have to run transmission lines. But th there'd be no need. You, each zone could have its own electrical manufacturing. And I, I would love to see it even town by town, small town by small town, small city by small city. I just want to get back home. Wanna have just a little bit of space. I just want to include a little bit of this because it's amusing, I think, and just I went up and down that ladder so many times and it was just me. You know, it's like a 20 foot high ceiling, so I used those two, oh, they're like 16 foot 2 by 8s. Um, to support the bamboo as I was stapling it. And that's cotton insulation uh, underneath. So it's completely non-toxic. There's no formaldehyde or anything like that. It's actually made, I think, from recycled uh, denim. We have the ability, we have the know-how, we, we've had it all along. This, this can be done. And there's lots of people like me uh, who are doing it individually and more and more towns and small cities um, like in Denmark and Iceland and uh, I know there's a community in the Midwest uh, that was destroyed by some floods and they're rebuilding totally green. Um, so people are doing this and I just think it's the butterfly effect where more people need to hear about people doing it to reverse the hypnosis and allow people to believe that it is possible because it is. Myself back to the land, the place where I can be myself. Don't wanna be nobody else. I plant some food and watch it grow. All organic, don't you know? We pay for water, that's for sure. Right from the ground, it's free and pure.
Don't worry, I'll be fine Like a cat, I've got nine If you miss me when I'm gone Think of me when you hear this song Come with me now, take my hand Let's get ourselves back to the land The country life's good for you and me Well, come on, won't you come with me? We weren't using any lights, and uh, it's winter time, and the sun is not shining too much, but you still get the idea. Wings at her window in the morning. Wings at her window in the morning. Wings at her window in the morning. And you can see that's still just two coats of the earth plaster. stove is actually uh, bottles in, in an earth plaster for the, the wall. And it's neat because the light comes through the bottles when you're inside. If she could, she'd sleep until the afternoon. But this world needs her to wake up and speak the truth. This is the upstairs. The truth needs a voice like hers to be heard. In the morning, she's walking by a man, Jacob Bird. And this is a ladder. Um, that, it's actually a 20 foot distance, a 20 foot high ceiling. And there's another little room up through there. Have it blocked off now for the winter so the cold air doesn't come down. She's a girl. And her words are gonna help to change this world. So this is Straw Bell Studio. This is what I built. I started it back in 1993. And you can see the main part and then the two additions to the side. That, that's the addition I uh, built just a few years ago. Side of the studio and again that's those are straw bales uh, with two coats of uh, earth cement and then that's a final coat of colored white uh, stucco base stucco based plaster so it's more of a stucco actually than a plaster and you, yeah there are several colors you could choose from that going that route and this was filmed in the summer so there's more light It's my belief that in the 21st century, with all our technology and knowledge and hopefully evolution and advancement in the human race, that life should be easier. People should have more time. People should have more time for themselves. They shouldn't have to be working so much and so hard. Um, we have machines to help us, right? And technology, that, that things should be easier. Um, and I find it ironic that today people are actually working harder than ever. and more preoccupied than ever with having a roof over their heads, with maintaining a home. You know, there's the fear that if you miss your mortgage payment that they're going to take away your home. That's, that's crazy. You, you should, 
I really believe that everyone should have a home and that should be an undeniable basic human right. Um, I'm not saying you should just have it for free. You should, you know, you have to put some effort towards it, but it, it shouldn't be such a high pressure situation to, you know, not be sure that you're going to have a home if, if you get sick or if you lose your job. So that that's one of my main messages in this in this film, and I'm very happy that I was able to, you know, use my own labor uh, and cheaper materials, uh, and and bypass the system of mortgages and banks and large amounts of money in order to have a home, and 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 they can't take it away from me because it, I don't owe any money on that, and that's that's been so liberating in my life. I, I just I want to share that, and I want to clue people in. I, I think more people, if they choose to, if, if, if they don't have high paying jobs, which I know I don't, um, you know, there's another way and, and you can still have a home and, and I, that's what I want to share in this movie. So I rented this Kubota for the day, and it works out quite a, a, lot, a whole lot cheaper than if you pay someone to do it, and it was very easy to learn. If you know how to drive, you can, you can drive one of those. After about an hour, you know what you're doing. That's actually a, a pentagon as opposed to a pyramid, uh, and the studio is an octagon, so I like different kinds of shapes. This is five, five main supports. And here's the inside, um, now we're going into the addition. And this was the, the building that only cost $500 to build. It, it looks a lot like a yurt. It's octagonal. Very earthy looking again. Here's the inside. That couch uh, we pulled out of an old van we had and has since been destroyed by the puppies. They have chewed it to bits. But yeah, I, I th two people could probably build this place in a month, you know, start to finish, completely starting from scratch and being completely, completely finished. I'd say two, two people working 40-hour weeks could, could build this place in a month, is my guess. You do have chores, so you do have to work a little bit every day living this way. I have to split wood, I have to haul water sometimes, or deal with a well pump that's not working, or unfreeze a line. So there are chores. Um, and sometimes you break your arm and you have to do this. Sometimes uh, life brings the unexpected and uh, out here living this way, you can't uh, stop surviving, so you gotta find a way to do what you can, how you can, but it's definitely not a life for everybody, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, this might take 10 times as long to accomplish the same thing, but um, if you want to stay warm, you got to have wood, so... 
Do you need help? No. That's the whole point. <laughs> Who's going to help you out here? <laughs> Let me get a good one. <laughs> good. <laughs> You're gonna chop down the, <laughs> the shed. <laughs> the shed. <laughs> Never. Nice one. That might be all we need, but. There are supposedly around 200,000 households in the United States that are energy independent, off the grid. I know mine isn't included in that number, so there's probably even more than that. That number has been growing over the last decade, supposedly about by a third per year. So that, that's quite a few new houses that are going off the grid. This is a movement. All my life I've been hearing How it's supposed to be But what might seem good to you Might not be so good for me My life is my own I'm sorry if you disagree But it belongs to me alone you be you, let me be me All I need is some time On my own to find what's best You know, it ain't no crime To be a little different from the rest <laughs> Just don't throw your back out. Huh? Just don't throw your back out, chopping wood. No way. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> you think, mother? You think this is easy, we hill? It's not easy. Tripod sucks.